At the end of Surah Al Munafiqun, are a profound advice to the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the meaning of the verses is as follows O you who believe, do not let your wealth, your possessions, and the material things, and also your children, your progeny, your family, don't let any of that distract you or preoccupy you from the remembrance of Allah, from dhikrullah. For whoever does this will be among the losers. Then Allah says, spend from what we have provided for you. Before death comes to one of you, and at that moment, this person says, Oh Allah, had you just kept me for a little bit more, so that I spend or give out for your sake, and I be from among the righteous, or the people who do good. And Allah will not delay any soul or any person beyond their appointed time in this life. And Allah is indeed full aware and acquainted with what you do. Let's start breaking it down, taking it one element uh, at a time and see what, we, what benefits we can draw from this. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Do not let your possessions, your wealth, the material things of this world, do not let them distract you. The material things in this world, the things you possess, are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are essentially good. Allah created them and gave them to us for our own sake, but for an overall purpose. But good things could be used the wrong way. They could be applied in a way that becomes detrimental and unhealthy. And that's when they oppose the purpose for which they were created. That shows that the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wealth, resourcefulness, there is, there is power that comes with, with, with wealth. There is resourcefulness. There is more ability. You're given more reach and more influence with money. You can do more things, whether good or bad. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could turn as a detriment to the purpose of your creation. They could start serving the opposite of the purpose for which they were given to you. So make sure you use them for the original purpose that they are given to you for. They are given to help you worship Allah, fulfill the purpose of your creation. The moment they start to take from that purpose, the moment that your attention to them starts to detract from the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they become detrimental, they become negative. They turn into a curse. And that has to do with the way you use them, the way you process them, the way you think about them, the way, the way you relate to them. And this is why Allah says in another place in the Quran that from your wealth, from your family, from your children, there is an enemy for you. There's an, it doesn't mean that your wealth is an enemy. It doesn't mean your children and your family are an enemy. They are a blessing from Allah. But if you do not use them well to serve the ultimate purpose of your existence and their existence, they can work against that purpose. And that's when they become an enemy. You make an enemy out of them. So this is what Allah SWT is saying. So money, wealth, children, resources do not have an intrinsic value of themselves, an absolute value whether they are good or evil. These are all means. It depends how you use them. So Allah is drawing our attention of a, a very serious pitfall that we are inclined to fall into. And that's to use the blessings that are given to us to, 
to help us reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can actually, through the gift of free will and choice, we are able to use them against that purpose. And that's when they turn into an enemy. So we have to be careful of this proclivity, of this tendency and of this possibility. We have to be alert. We cannot let down our God. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't let them distract you. There is a due level of responsibility and attention that you need to give to your wealth, to earning and to making a living. And it's something that is noble in Islam. The Prophet ﷺ warns against failing to provide for your dependents. The Messenger ﷺ says in an authentic hadith, it is sufficient of a sin. It's such a huge sin for a person. It, this sin is destructive enough that a person fails to provide, meaning intentionally, or they do not do what they can to provide for their dependents. It's a sin. Yet if money or wealth or possessions become a distraction from the main purpose, they turn into an enemy. So this is something that we have to be very careful about, mindful of this. The second thing is your own children, your own family. Although they could be a blessing for you. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, it is narrated from him that every, every time he saw his daughter, his daughter sort of came to him and he gave her a hug, his little daughter. He, he would address her with something, he would say, welcome to the shield that protects me from the hellfire. Our children are blessings. The fact that we take care of them, the fact that they come through us, the fact that we educate them, that we cultivate them, and we help them fulfill the purpose of their creation. This is a source of great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that we provide for them and we treat them well, it becomes an opportunity for us to earn Allah's pleasure and enter paradise. Yet, if we exceed the limit with this to the point that our taking care of our children and pleasing them starts to work at the expense of the main purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it starts to be counterproductive. It starts to take us more to the hellfire. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us against. So this is something we have to be careful about. And Allah here is addressing the believers. The believers specifically who are meant to be already on the path leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people who are supposed to have made the commitment to worship Allah and fulfill the purpose of their creation. Allah says, whoever falls into this, then these will be the losers. And we have this natural propensity to avoid being among the losers. We don't want to be among the losers. And most people tend to, to use or apply this tendency only in this world. They want to win every game or every competition. But this propensity is built in us in order to help us and to guide us to save ourselves from the hellfire and make sure that we make it to paradise. Allah puts this advice in context. And he gives us a practical advice. Allah says, spend from what you have been given, from what we have provided for you. There is a point here that everything you have, don't feel entitled to it. Don't ever think that you truly possess it, that you have a true sense of ownership. You don't possess anything of your own. Even your existence, your very existence is dependent on Allah. So you don't even own your own existence. So understand your temporary nature, your dependent nature, that you cannot exist on your own. You don't have a merit on your own. You don't have any rights on your own. Everything is just gifted to you. So Allah is saying the money that you have, the wealth that you have, even if it's little, it is from Allah and it belongs to Allah. You are entrusted with it as a means of testing you, how you are going to handle it. Are you going to use it in service of the main purpose of your creation? Or are you going to make yourself the purpose and the goal of this, of this life, which is some sort of departure from the purpose of your existence? So spend from what you have been given. And this is a very profound exercise. Many people think about spending 
as an external exercise that you give from some of the some of the wealth that you have you give that you extend it to others you depart from it and you think that's what it is this is the tip of the iceberg the reality of giving and the 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 body of giving of what happens the dynamics of giving take place in the heart where no one can see this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran you will not achieve righteousness that beautiful place of being mindful of Allah, being connected to Allah, being on purpose, you will not truly achieve that unless, until you have spent from what you love, you depart. So there is some kind of attachment to what you possess, which is unhealthy. You need to sever that connection. Why? To free your heart from any connection to other than Allah. So you are willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this brings you back on path. So Allah is showing, Allah is giving us a way to cultivate ourselves. So there is this kind of change element that is taking place within us. There's a spiritual kind of profound process taking place. But there is also eternal consequences for this. Allah appreciates the sadaqah and Allah rewards you immensely for this. Before the moment of death comes, because it's going to come. So Allah is putting our life in context because many people treat life as if they are going to stay here forever. We tend to act as if there is no death, as if there is no departure from this life. When actually the biggest fact about this life is that it is temporary, that you're going to leave that there's an end for your existence here. And you should never think about life in a way that excludes this fact that you're here on a temporary basis. Don't ever entertain the thought. Don't ever plan. Don't ever arrive at a conclusion that has to do with life while you are unaware of the fact that it is temporary and it has an end. And this will help you make wise optimal decisions about your life and how to use whatever Allah has given you. So Allah says, spend from what we have given you before death comes to you, before that end, inevitable end comes to you. And then you wake up to this fact and you want to fix all of your actions. You want to change your, your direction. And you start to say, oh Allah, just delay me a little bit more. So I can pay, I can give. And this shows the profound nature and the, the powerful impact that sadaqah has upon us as humans. The scholars said that what the person only thought as they were dying. They only thought, or the first thing that jumped to their mind that could potentially save them and increase their chances of pleasing Allah and entering paradise. At the moment of death was sadaqah. When you are on this bridge, Crossing over to the hereafter when you are the most awake. As Yahya ibn Mu'ad rahimahullah ta'ala said, one of the greatest of at tabi'in he says, he said, people are intoxicated. People are hypnotized as they are in this life. They are in a dream. They wake up the, at the moment of death. So when a person is so aware and so awake at the moment of death, what they think about, the best, the best chances are with sadaqah, with giving for the sake of Allah, departing from what they love. And it shows the profoundness of sadaqah. And this is something we should not forget or grow heedless of. The importance of sadaqah in our life, it's profound. And one of the best things about sadaqah, it doesn't take time. It's an instant. And also, it's available to everyone even when you don't have. When you have very little, it's appreciated when you give from the little that you have, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that one dirham supersedes and is appreciated by Allah even more than a hundred thousand dirham. How come? Because if the person gives from a position of lack, they've given so much. A, pers a person has two dirham, he gives one, that's half of their wealth, 50% of their wealth. Whereas if someone has millions and they give a hundred thousand, this is a fraction of their wealth. So it's proportionate. So we should always consider sadaqah as a means to save ourselves, to rectify our ways, and to build credit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah shows the moment of regret that is inevitable in the life of every human being.
some of the early generations of a Salaf said that when a person dies, everyone experiences regret. If this person did not do well, they would regret that they, have, that they did not do well in their life. But if they have done well, they would still feel remorse and regret because they wish at that time that they had done even better than what they already did. So a person says, Oh Allah, give me just a bit more time so I can give sadaqah and I can become righteous and correct my ways. Allah says, Allah is not going to delay. Allah is not going to give anyone more time. That's it. You've been given your appointed time. When your time comes, you're going to leave. So you better be ready from now. Don't, don't postpone. Don't put it off. Don't do it last minute because you don't know when death is going to come and in what state it's going to meet you. So as long as you have your senses, you have your awareness, you have your, your chance now, utilize it. Do not procrastinate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, and race, haste, rush to good deeds. Because trials, tribulations, confusion is on the way. As long as you are able to do good deeds, do that because there will be times in your life where you will not be able to do that. So seize the moment. Allah says, Allah will not delay, Allah will not give more time to anyone. And Allah aware is, is aware of everything that you do. <clears throat> if we live our lives in the light of this divine advice, there is no better way to live. That means keeping ourselves in check, making sure that we have our final destination always in sight. We have a sense of direction. We have a sense of awareness of the temporariness of this world, that it's, it's fleeting nature that is going to end. And an awareness, it also gives us an awareness of who we are, that we don't own anything. Everything that we are given is a test, is a trial. And the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could turn into a curse if we do not manage them well. If we do not observe the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what life is about. And anyone who expects life just to be a smooth ride, then they're definitely going to have a bumpy ride. It's the nature of this life to, for us to be tested. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies or s clearly states in the Quran as to why he brought us into existence. Allah says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah created life and death and life so that he tests you who will be better in their actions. And actions here does not mean only external actions, behaviors, but that includes primarily actions of the heart, inner states that are within our control. And the verses also show something very important with regards to why we were created. We were created for dhikrullahi azza wa jal. Allah says, do not let your wealth and your children and your family distract you from remembering Allah. Allah actually created the whole world to remember Him, to celebrate His names and attributes, because that's the ultimate truth in life. So the world is a reflection of the names and attributes of Allah. So this shows us the importance of the remembrance of Allah. You remember Allah with your tongue. You remember Allah in your heart. You remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your conduct. Are your actions, your attitudes, your steps in life, are they informed? And are they designed according to this purpose? which is to celebrate the names of Allah, to make their meanings manifest. That's why we are here. And it's profound and beautiful purpose. It sets you in the, on the right track. You will have a sense of mission, a sense of nativity to yourself because this is how you are designed inside. You will be true to your nature. It will be fulfilling. It will be profound. And it will be meaningful. And this will help you handle life, deal with its pains. Life is extremely painful. 
if you are not on the right track, the pain is magnified because a lot of it will come from inside. When you depart your true nature, when you are not aligned with who you truly are, there is so much pain magnified in your life. So let's hold on to this uh, divine prescription and let's try our best not to let anything distract us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our obligations and our commitment to Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us 